Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. I'm glad he shot himself because I think I would have killed him. Strong reaction tonight from the family of a man killed in yesterday's Grand Forks Walmart shooting. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. 70-year-old Gregory Wyland was shot and killed. 47-year-old Lisa Braun was shot and remains tonight in satisfactory condition at All True Hospital. Police say Airman Marcel Willis pulled up to this a Walmart just before 1 a.m. Tuesday morning, walked in and shot Wyland to death and wounded Braun within a minute. Police say that they still have no motive as to why Willis opened fire. It's all left the family of the shooting victim, Greg Wyland, with strong emotions. He's just one in a million. Okay. Right. And I don't say it because he's my brother-in-law. He just, he's there for everybody. Okay. Any reaction to the guy responsible for this? I'm glad he shot himself because I think I would have killed him. Police say autopsies of Wyland and the gunman Willis have been completed. Toxicology results to determine if Willis was under the influence of alcohol or drugs are not yet available. Now we're told by witnesses of the shooting that some shoppers ran out of the store while others took cover. We wanted to find out what should you do in a case like this. West Acres public safety manager says that they have an action plan in place at the mall and make sure that employees know how to direct shoppers if something like this ever happened. Adding most stores in the area have a plan, but it's key to be aware of your surroundings. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Nicole Johnson shows us how to react. If a shooting were to happen at the mall, what would you do? I would probably hide in whatever store I was in and call 911. They're very difficult situations, so it's very hard to, you know, put a right or wrong action. As long as they're taking some sort of action, uh, that's uh, usually uh, a good first step. Here at West Acres Mall and many other businesses, there's a three-part plan. First, run. Then find a place to hide. And if the opportunity presents itself, fight back. Do you think most people know what to do or have some sort of idea what, what to do? I would think they would. I mean, I think it would be just a natural reaction to take cover and uh, call 911 if you have your cell phone, which most people have nowadays. With these instances becoming more prevalent in the news, I think it's becoming more to the forefront of, of people's minds. I don't, I think people don't know what to do. So, unless they've been there. I don't know, I would hope that the place would have guidelines they would follow and keep everybody as safe as, as they can. It's chaotic. But, uh, you know, people that are, are prepared to respond, they do so. That was Nicole Johnson reporting. Now, Jensen says their plan was created in part by the Department of Homeland Security and law enforcement advice, adding they frequently train with local police in case of a shooting. Another great day out there, which makes total sense. And so There's a backyard barbecue schedule. Let's go to Hutch to find out where he's at tonight and ask him about the chance of rain later. Hutch? Thanks so much, Mike. I got to tell you, we are in North Fargo at Jennifer Garza's backyard, and it's a perfect evening for a barbecue. Jennifer, tell us where you signed up one more time. Fargo Cashwise. And uh, where in the store do you have to go to sign up for those that are interested? In the meat section. Okay, now whether we show up in your backyard or not, once you sign up, you're also signed up for the drawing at the end of the year for the, the grill that's given away. How was everything? Very, very good. Very good. All right. And uh, I got to tell you what, the weather almost everywhere is very, very good as well. Here is a look, though, at the radar. We have thunderstorms out to the west. A couple of these storms have been, oh, strong with some small hail possible from them. Here is a look at those right now moving through Foster and Eddy County, some in Barnes County, just south of Valley City right now. Uh, at best, they'll have real small pea-sized hail, but the storms that are up north near Carrington, those capable of slightly larger hail at times upwards of a half of an inch or so. So be prepared for some thunder and lightning. All this stays out to the west of us in Grand Forks and Fargo this evening. Overnight, there'll be a chance for some more storms. So coming up here in just a few minutes, we'll talk about your extended forecast. But for now, we're just back to having a good time here at the Backyard Barbecue. Hey, does this spin? <gasps> it does. All right, Maybe thanks. she'll let me sit in it. Reporting live from North Fargo. Thanks, Hutch.
Although new homes and businesses are being planned in Detroit Lakes, one local business will be closing its doors, unfortunately. Locally owned Seoul, a water sport and clothing shop, has been All in right. the area for the past four years. They rent the area where the new restaurant will go on West Lake Street, and they're well known for their floating wooden sunglasses that sell all across the U.S. The 25-year-old business owner is looking to start a shop in Phoenix, Arizona next summer. Ben Magnuson says Seoul was the first business to bring paddle boarding to Lakes Country. It's just been really cool to be a hometown kid and be able to, you know, chase your dreams and have the support of everybody around you. So it's, it's, it's been awesome. So we're, we're looking forward to another good summer. Seoul is open now until the end of the summer, and they're encouraging you to come visit them after you hit up the DL Street Fair this weekend. If you want to meet our Valley News Live team, we'll be having a meet and greet this Friday at the Street Fair from 11 to 1 p.m. This year, the Street Fair has been moved over one street because of construction on Washington Avenue. Earlier today, President Barack Obama announced a new clean water regulation, which is meant to restore federal authority to limit pollution in rivers, lakes, streams, and wetlands. Congressman Kevin Kramer of North Dakota is against the new regulation because of government overreach. It has trampled on the rights of states and uh, landowners, and it's a power grab and a property grab, the likes of which we, I don't, I've never seen in my lifetime. So it really means that the, the federal government thinks that they have a right to have regulation over a raindrop all the way to the Mississippi River and the Gulf Coast which clearly the Constitution doesn't provide, and nor do, frankly, past uh, U.S. Uh, Supreme Court decisions. Congressman Kramer says that they're headed to a court battle and that he will work himself to exhaustion to repeal this order. Some changes are coming for Minnesota State Community and Technical College as it begins its $7 million renovation project to its Moorhead campus. And to celebrate the kickoff to construction, the college hosted a groundbreaking ceremony. The project will add an expansion to the transportation center. First of all, I think we'll be able to accept additional students than what we do now. We are able to accept about 60, 70 or so students, and I think we'll be able to accept more once the building is done. Also, the students will have a lot more hands-on training. Uh, there'll be two students working on a piece of equipment as opposed to four. The new facility will welcome its first class of students in the fall of 2016. You can help fight homelessness in our community by skipping a night out on the town. Today, Fraser Limited is asking you to put down your fork and donate the money that would have been spent on dining out to support young adults who are homeless. The donations will help fund the permanent supportive housing project currently in the works. Wonderful so far. We have lots of uh, businesses and companies and individuals that are skipping a meal today to help out uh, youth and young adults. If you'd like to donate, we have information online. Just head to valleynewslive.com and click on the hot button. It's a creative lesson in learning about your roots while at the same time lending a helping hand. Fifth graders from Harwood Elementary are learning about their community. And they're learning about it firsthand from Marge Fee. Some folks in Harwood call Marge the Grand Marshal because of her lifelong involvement in community activities. The 18 fifth graders came to Marge and her husband Paul's house to help out with some odd jobs, as you can see, and things that just simply needed to get done. The service learning project is not only aimed at lending a hand, but also helping the young people gain a sense of understanding on what Harwood means to them as they grow up. Way to go, kids. Yeah. Later on Valley News Live at 6, taking advantage of great growing weather, what these students were planting today. Cleaning up the main course here at the Cashwise Backyard Barbecue, but there's still some watermelon. I'll have details on what you can expect for the rest of your work week and into the weekend ahead in your forecast. Coming up right after this.